Hello, my friends. I'm Jamie McGlue. I'm an independent candidate for Dublin Bay North in the right around the corner election. Um, so I uh, am going to talk about the uh, very interesting phrase, which um, I think a lot of people are a bit uncomfortable with, um, but which actually is a good example where it's just obviously true. Um, and yet, uh, because of the amount of very, you know, low level, but constant demonization and kind of cultural programming, social engineering that's going on from, you know, the elite outwards, political media, financial elites kind of outwards. Um, it seems like a lot of people are, oh, I don't want to be associated with crazy people. But here it is. Ireland belongs to the Irish. Uh, now, think about it. If you said that to people, even like, you know, 50 years ago, they would be like, yeah, what's your point? Like, they wouldn't, like, what do you mean? Of course. France belongs to the French. Germany belongs to the Germans. Vietnam belongs to the Vietnamese. Ethiopia belongs to the Ethiopians. Like, what's, what's your point? Obviously. Uh, doesn't mean you can't have other people living there. Doesn't mean you couldn't have some expatriates, you know, expats from abroad or, you know, people on work visas or people who have married into the culture, you know, and they're there, or maybe they haven't married anyone, but they're there working, you know, like um, they just like the place, but they, you know, they haven't married into the culture or they might even preserve their own traditions. You might have some Muslim people in um, Christian Europe, you know, like a hundred years ago. And, uh, but, you know, it's not like they're all aware, like up until like five minutes ago, everyone was aware, like, yeah, this is the country and you are a guest. And if you kind of can connect well enough, you can become part of that nation. You can marry in or just, you know, say your children, say like Jewish people who maybe weren't marrying in, they were marrying within Jewish communities. A lot of them would feel like, um, say, at the 100 years ago, prior to the foundation of the state of Israel, uh, there was a big debate within the Jewish community in the West where a lot of them felt like, no, we are Germans, you know. Yeah, we're Jewish, but we're also Germans. We've been here a long time now. And so you could have that where, you know, people, you know, join the, the nation. But these days, you know, people like, oh, Ireland belongs to the Irish. Like, you know, uh, we, we, I think probably most people would be reluctant to say it. I was reluctant to say it, you know, until very recently. But I, it's just struck me as one of those things. I, I, you know, I'm always looking for my blind spots. And I realized, like, wait a minute, what's going on there? Because who else would Ireland belong to? And it's not saying, it's very different than saying, hey, all Lithuanians, get out of Ireland. All Ukrainians, get out of Ireland. All Africans, get out of Ireland. No, that's a different thing. And I don't agree with that, right? Um Anyone who came here illegally, yes, I think they should all be deported immediately because you shouldn't break the law. And that's very serious. Entering a country, I would never do that, entering a country illegally. So you should be deported if you've done that. That's very um, disrespectful and it's against the law. But, you know, people who are legally here, they've legally immigrated, I say, okay, yep, you're, you follow the rules, here you are, you know, that's cool. And, um, you know... Uh, the majority of people everywhere are cool, in my opinion. Um, and uh, so that's all great. But Ireland belongs to the Irish. So what does this mean? Basically, you know, just like my home belongs to me and my family, right? Uh, so some other family can come along and say, hey, we're really nice people. We're very hardworking. We, we never break the law. Now, if you're not racist, I want you to let me into your house. We're going to live in your house now. Do I need to let them in? No, of course, it's my house. I can say, oh, well, I mean you all, or I mean you well, but actually, no, I'm not going to do that. And secondly, uh, you're actually a, kind of being a bit of a, you know, a bit of a jerk here, like, or maybe more, like, it's actually really not okay what you're doing, pr trying to pressure me to let you into my house, like, rather than asking if you can come in as a guest or, you know, trying to guilt trip me, uh, that's like not on. You should not be. That's very disrespectful. And so a lot of people are doing that to nation states, especially the wealthy nations of the world. You know, um, I'm sure if Europe wasn't so wealthy, you know, on the backs of all you know our ancestors and all the work they did and the innovations they created and whatever, 
empires as well, you know, not Ireland, but other European countries. Fair enough. There's an aspect there. It's a mixed bag. Um, but a lot of that's been destroyed by war and stuff. But whatever, you know, you can have that conversation. But uh, so if it wasn't so wealthy, I don't think so many people would be interested in coming here. So it's like they want a better life. That's the whole idea. But a lot of these people, they can have a good life elsewhere as well. So that's, you know, it's not as simple as, you know, poor people coming to get out of, you know, starvation. There's a bit of that, but there's a lot also, I'd say most of it, the legal immigration is people who just want a better life. Totally natural, but it's totally natural for homeless people to want to go into people's houses. But it's also totally natural for people who own the houses to say, I'm so sorry, you know, I can't let you do that. This is my family's home. Um, so just to tie it into the Ireland thing. So here's basically the case, and I'll, I'll put in the um, the description, you can see this. Basically, someone um, sent me uh, on Twitter, a uh, or they like tagged me like a video of someone saying Ireland is Irish. Great song. Um, uh, I'll put it in the description actually, cause it was so good. And, um, uh, and it's kind of just basically the vibe is like, look, you can call us names and whatever, but Ireland is Irish. We've been through a lot. Um, we are like a family of families, right? The, we are a people, we have this land. We recognize the same rights for all the people around the world. And so this whole globalist kind of thing of like, oh, the ideology that nations don't have a right to their own space. That's really repulsive to me. And I think you, I'm not a communist, right? <clears throat> so I think you have the right to your own house. I can't say, oh, no, that's collective property, mister. No, that's your property. I have mine. I can work and be, you know, use my ingenuity and I can sacrifice and I can get a hold of things, you know? And I'm not like wealthy, you know, like, uh, you know, that's one problem with you know, the political thing. People are asking, like, why aren't you doing like this and that? And so I'm just really busy working full time and I've got kids and stuff, but I'm doing what I can. But anyway, that's a side note. But I believe in private property and like, you know, uh, free market capitalism. We can compete. The people who work the hardest and, you know, uh, give the divine gifts they are, they've been given um, as fully as possible. You know, you will move ahead so long as, you know, you know, socialism and crony capitalism hasn't taken, you know, the free market away. If there's a genuine free market, you can get ahead by solving people's problems. They will give you their money because you're giving them what they want and what they need. So I believe in private property. In the same way, I believe a nation is basically private property of that nation, the, the nationals. So it's uh, just like I can have a share in Apple. Uh, I don't own all of Apple, but I have a share. I, I own stock in Apple. And so I have part ownership, certain fraction of a percent. In the same way, me as an Irish citizen, I have, and you know, like I'm born and raised in Australia, but my parents are both Dubliners. So my family's been Irish like for Yonks back to the two a day Dan and whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, so being Irish, I have a stake in this property of the nation and it, the all Irish people together, we have this collective ownership of this space. And how did we earn it? Well, our, it's an inheritance from our ancestors. They earned it through blood, sweat, and tears. And that's the way everything works around the world. That's the only system we have, the fairest system we are for how do we allocate who owns the land, right? Because it's messy. Yeah, there's conquest and things like this. But a lot of that happened earlier when that was normal for humans. And so even the most enlightened humans were doing that, you know, but maybe they just weren't, you know, killing everyone. They were just taking over. And But, you know, we got to take, you know, that was the context back then. But here we are now in our own context. This is the fairest system to say, yeah, you have, you know, just like your private property, you own your house. This nation owns the the, the land, the territory. And so, you know, Ireland belongs to the Irish. And now to clarify, immigrants can really genuinely, you know, like Fina Gay and Fianna Fáil, they would say, oh, immigrants, immig they don't care about immigrants at all. They would throw immigrants under the bus as soon as it gives them more power, you know? Um, so if a, if a culture monoculture was to their the benefit of them and whatever, you know, globalist paymasters are pulling strings in here and there, um, they would be right on it immediately, right? They look at them. They're going, you know, they're meant to be enemies, you know, from the civil war. And then as soon as they're staying in, stay in power and, you know, you know, unify or, you know, maintain your supposed principles and lose power, they do what gives them power. Everything they do, it's all, it always gives, is what it gives them more power, more status, more attention, more money. 
So it's pretty low consciousness, pretty re reptile brain kind of stuff, you know, just like they're just trying to expand their territory over the world, you know, more power. And it's understandable. We don't need to hate them, although it's understandable if you hate them. I don't hate them. I just, I try to have compassion for them. Like these poor souls, you know, these are branches on the tree of life, just like me, but these are very lost, confused branches and they are not fit for leadership at all. Um, and so, but they, you know, they don't care about immigrants, but they, they, they just talk about it because it, it's what is in vogue and what gives them more power by dividing, conquering the nation, allowing, you know, to, uh, the nation to be flooded with um, people from abroad, um, you know, for various reasons, you know, low, low wage workers, um, turning Ireland into an economic hostel where, you know, you can just have all these multinational corporations based here and, you know, all this uh, stuff going on, low taxes, um, as well as the fact that Ireland traditionally has been very rebellious against authority, although very obedient. There's this kind of kind of switches between the two. It's a bit bipolar. Um, and uh, you could make the argument that bringing in all these people, uh, you know, the kind of thing in COVID where the people who were, you know, people were standing up to some extent against the tyranny of COVID, like it made no sense, all these lockdowns, totally unscientific. But if you can bring in more and more people from all over the world, especially countries where they just take it for granted. Yeah, of course the government are a bunch of crooks. Yeah, but you just ignore it. You just get on with your life. That hasn't been the culture in Ireland. The culture here has been the government will will serve justice and you know the divine way of love and Irish people, or else we need a revolution. And that's every generation that's kept kept happening. Um, and so there's a bit of a danger there. You know, if you're like, ah, oh, prevent you know a revolution in Ireland, peaceful you know revolution in Ireland. Um, bring in a bunch of people from elsewhere. Also, that would make sense. I'm not saying that is what's happening. I can't read their minds, but you, you could see why that would be a fair conclusion, you know? Um, but apart from the thing of just low wages, et cetera, and whatever ideologies they have. So to bring it back here and kind of round this up, tie it together in a nice little ribbon, nice little green ribbon. Basically, Japan is the property of the Japanese. If they invite you in, beautiful you know arigato gozaimashita that's really nice you can join them you know um if brazil is the property of the brazilians if they invite you in you can work there maybe you can marry into the country you can become part of the culture or maybe you have your own thing you don't join that culture but you're living there and you're part of the society then uh, obrigado you know that's great you're part of the country um whatever all around the world you know like uh the nation, this idea that everyone has the right to be everywhere is, is ridiculous. And not just does it not make sense intuitively with our traditions and our, you know, kind of natural instincts, um, but also it's it encourages conflict, right? Because it's resisting nature. It's resisting our natural instincts. So even if you were to say, oh, but that's all, you know, just stupid, you know, animal instinct stuff, you know, tribalism, we are all the same. Okay, well, genetically or whatever, yeah, we're all the same on some level. We're all humans. Um, but culturally, culture is what you, is your beliefs and the behaviors that flow from your beliefs. So what is true and false and what is good and bad, which we could say what is right and wrong in the descriptive and prescriptive sense. So is and should basically, right? What's right and wrong? Uh, different cultures have different beliefs about that on every little aspect of life. And so Ireland's pretty similar to England, but there is differences. But then if you compare us to China, we'd be very, you know, we'd look almost identical, but we are different, you know. So all the world, there's these differences. Everyone's unique. Even within a country, you have differences of culture. There's a certain point where you go, okay, this is a reasonable boundary. Let's say this culture, that's a nation. That's close enough, you know. And most of the time we can clearly see that's a nation. Sometimes, it, you know, it's blurry, but fine, you know. And so uh, cultures are different. We have different beliefs and different behaviors because we, we act according to what we think is right and wrong. And so, yes, we're all the same on one level, but we're, no, we're not all the same on this other level. And so not only you, you could say, oh, it's all barbaric, you know, caveman stuff, you know, nationalism as tribal. But guess what? The evidence points out that your way is going to cause more conflict. Are you a fan of conflict? Are you some sort of crazy far right hooligan? Are you want to hurt people or are you a good, kind, conscious person? If you're a good, kind, conscious person, person, you or Persian, if that exists, I don't know, um, then you should want what brings harmony. And when I look ahead, I'm thinking, you know, 
a thousand years from now, we'll all be much more mingled together. But I still think there will be nations. I think it's a natural, beautiful thing, different kind of um, organic expressions of, you know, belief and, you know, behavior. It's wonderful. The diversity of culture in the world. I want diversity of culture. I don't want a monoculture. It's very funny. People talking about diversity and yet they want all the world to be one big, you know, bland thing, you know, taking away all the, the diversity. And they talk about, you know, um, stopping hate speech. And then they're the ones who are always demonizing everyone. Whereas me, I think they're really dangerous, but I never demonize them. I always say, look, I, I have compassion for you. You're a child of God. And so it's very interesting, isn't it? It's almost like one side are full of shit. <laughs> Pardon my French. Anyway, so if you really are, when I look ahead, I think the path to that is enlightened nationalism. Basically, we recognize that um, some level of immigration is good for a country. It, it uplifts the country. So I have friends in Ireland from Ukraine, from uh, Mexico, from uh, Argentina, uh, from Poland, uh, from uh, all over the place, China, you know, uh, Japan. There are the people um, like, you know, and I really get on with everyone. If you're a cool person, I get on with you, you know, and even if you're a crazy kind of person, then, okay, look, I, I try to do my best, you know, to water off a duck's back. Okay. You know, you're on your journey. Good luck to you, you know? Um, so there's no hatred here, you know? And the fact is the idea that Ireland belongs to the Irish, France belongs to the French, China belongs to the Chinese, uh, you know, Senegal belongs to the Senegalese. Uh, this is not inherently racist, but racists will always use this. That's the problem. Racists will always use this because it's low hanging fruit. It's a truth, like William Blake said, a truth that's told with bad intent beats all the lies you can invent. So racists will always use this because it helps them. But the fact is, it's not inherently a racist thing. It's just a fact. Like, yeah, the the, the territory, the country, the territory of uh, belongs to the nation. Ireland belongs to the Irish. And uh, the native people, the vast majority of native people, even with all the brainwashing that's going on, you know, cultural indoctrination of like demonization through the media and this, that, and not the other. The majority of Irish people still believe, yeah, we, we, we want an Irish country. We want Ireland to be Irish, you know, not some like character caricature thing, or whatever, like green Guinness on St. Patrick's Day or whatever, but, you know, just genuinely Irish, just ourselves, you know, and that can change and grow, but we want to be on our journey. We don't want to be like plant, plantationed with people from all over the, the world who are coming in it so so quickly in such large numbers that Ireland is going to become just one of 12 different cultures. And it's like, no, no, this is meant to be mostly Irish. And then the other cultures can inspire the Irish culture and in, in, invigorate it. But if you get to a too many, the, if those community communities, other communities get too large and they're not just integrating, if they're like pursuing their own culture on Irish soil, and if they get too large, then that actually creates more conflict where that starts to dissolve the Irish culture and you go around places and it doesn't feel Irish. You're in a bar and people are shouting at the top of their lungs, you know, in the middle of the day or something. It's like, well, normally people would be kind of speaking quietly, minding their own business. And just there's a thousand examples like that, you know, where it's like there's different ways of behaving. It's not saying it's wrong objectively, but that it's not Irish. And this is Ireland and it, we have a right to have it our way, our traditional way. Just like in my house, I have the right, my rules, my house, my rules, you know, and there's nothing, am I hateful just because I say you need to take your shoes off in my house? No, but you're in my house. So you take them off or get outside. You know, I go to your house and you're like, you know, to keep the shoes on. Eat. And I go, well, I, I prefer to take them off. I always take them off. No, 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 please. I don't, we don't like that. We want you to wear your shoes. All right. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Okay, sure. No problem. I'll keep them on your rules, you know? So in a nutshell, Ireland is, has benefited from immigration. I am an immigrant of a sort, although I'm Irish, you know, it's like my parents emigrated to Australia in the late eighties. And then I've re-immigrated re back to Ireland. Um, and I'm obsessed with Irish history. I, and, you know, I'm learning the uh, Gaelic and I have children here and, and I speak to them mostly through Irish as much as I can. We're learning together. I'll, you know, I'm like trying to say something. I'm like, wait, how do I say that? I have to look it up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, um, and whatever, like, but, uh, and, you know, um, my uh, wife to be, my fiance is from the Czech Republic. So we, you know, like, uh, 
and I have all these friends who are from all these other countries. So nothing against immigrants. They definitely make the, the country better, but it's like everything in moderation, you know? Um, where's that balance point? Where's the sweet spot, the golden zone? You know, because guess what? 50% outsiders does not make Ireland more beautiful. It'll it'll bring a great sadness and tragedy to this country because it'll be this extra feeling of like, we thought we had lost ourselves with, with the British imperialism, um, almost wiping out the language, wiping out so many traditions, you know, wiping out so many people. Um, and then all the emigration which followed where this separating the families, ch parents don't get to see their children grow up. They don't get to meet their grandchildren, all that trauma. Um, which is continuing with Irish people leaving the country now because it's, you know, too many people coming in, no houses, you know, um, you know, the economy is, is skewed towards, you know, people coming into work for Google from whatever country on, you know, low wages um, where the native people, you know, have to deal with these higher prices because of all the money here, but they're not, a lot of us aren't actually part of that, you know, higher speed economy where you get in the Google money or whatever, you know? And um, so it's continuing we we don't need another trauma there where it's like we've lost Ireland even more, you know? And I really think as we to move towards this beautiful future, enlighten nationalism. So we say, yes, immigrants can be um, uplifting, but we need to be honest and it mustn't, it shouldn't be taboo to say, look, uh, there is such a thing as too many people joining the party, you know? And that's the same thing with immigration. It's nothing personal. Just because I'm not letting, inviting you to my wedding doesn't mean I hate you just means hey, I've, I've already got enough people here I can't fit you on the list and that's my right because guess what it's my event you know and so like if if a country is like hey Jamie you no know, if I want to say I wanted to move to Japan and Japan's like oh sorry you know you can't you can't live here I'm not going to get all like irate and like oh this isn't fair I'm going to go well okay fair enough I don't know if you've got good reasons or bad reasons but I know you have the right to make that choice so um so I think we need to walk a line where we can say, and we need, unfortunately, we need to really go out of our way because a lot of people will get tricked and spooked by the brainwashing. Um, so when people say, oh, Jamie's racist or something, where it's like, clearly I'm not. But so, and, you know, if, so if we're going to talk about this, I think we really need to go out of our way to make it really clear. We love people everywhere. Immigrants, you know, are human beings and they do amazing things. You know, uh, most immigrants are, are cool. But... Uh, you can have too much immigration in certain contexts and during a housing crisis when you've got an endangered native language and, you know, hospitals and schools and the tourism industry are all being crushed by this immigration uh, situation, um, not just the illegal immigration, but also legal immigration, bring in huge numbers of people from elsewhere, many of whom are very wealthy and just coming in, you know, to get lush jobs or whatever, that uh, you can have too much immigration. And so to say pro-immigrant, anti-immigration for now, and uh, that that's not racist. And if you think it's racist, well, tell me why, because actually I would put it to you that you are the one who's hurting people. And, you know, I don't want to make you feel bad, but if you're going to try and make me feel bad, okay, be careful, you know, don't play with fire. Like, Or, you know, uh, those who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Like, let's talk about it. Like, cultures need balance and a high trust society where crime is reduced because everyone gets along and we all feel like we're connected as one community. Um, that is the way forward. And with certain amounts of immigration, definitely certain countries like the USA, for example, it's part of their culture. The idea that they're unifying um, disparate different groups uh, for this, you know, mission of, you know, like freedom and this and that. Um, so that's that they could have more immigration than say other cultures like Ireland, where it's, we've been, you know, kind of ha we had plantations and we've been victimized by colonialism and we're trying to re, you know, reawaken this traditional culture uh, and heal ourselves of trauma, which you see, you know, at the pub when people are drinking a million pints of Guinness to get over the pain or in the streets of poor neighborhoods where, you know, there's all, all this chaos and, you know, um, there's a whole, you know, you look at the North, you know, there's a whole ton of unresolved things we, we need to take care of. Our government totally ignoring what we want you know, oppressing us during COVID. And then it's clear 75% or whatever the population wants, you know, to reduce immigration and the government just say, oh, no, it's still an extremist fringe belief. Oh, three quarters of the country say it and the government, democratic representatives don't care. So we need to deal with these things. And so right now, the ideal, in my opinion, the ideal amount of legal immigrate, illegal immigration, zero. Legal immigration, 
right now, very small. I don't know exactly what it is. There would be some where it's like the love of your life is in the middle of their process for getting their citizenship. Okay, yeah, that should continue for sure. Situations where it's like um, someone is really in tune with the culture and they're going to be great for some business. No one else around can do it. Bring them in. Great. There's going to be some exceptions, but the, uh, it shouldn't be like 50,000 people a year or something. We, sh we should have like a low level of immigration. Um, even zero would be probably be better than what we've currently got, you know. Um, but still, I think the balance point would probably be uh, some immigration, but very, you know, small, controlled, like Australia does, maybe on lower numbers, though, but where you're just checking each individual. Okay, do you really need to be here? If not, then if it's like you would like to be here, but you don't need to, sorry, we've got a lot going on. You can't join the party right now, you know. Um, so Ireland belongs to the Irish, right? This is the property, this country, this land, this island is the property of the nation of Ireland. And uh, it's a collective ownership. We all have stakes of ownership in this property. Um, and we have the right to control the property. That's our God-given freedom, our natural rights, if you prefer. And uh, it's we don't want to be, you know, fundamentalist, like, you know, afraid of outsiders and that kind of thing. Um, or some people, you know, telling me, go back to England. Like, yeah, I'm not from England, pal, but all right, whatever. Anyway, um, you know, but it, it's understandable, but that's, that's not, that's low consciousness. That's not what we need, you know? And most people aren't going to rally around that, by the way. So if we want to be practical, we need to be a bit more in the middle. Um, but basically saying, this is our country. We have the right to decide what happens in our country. We're not a province of some European empire run from Brussels. We're not a province of the British empire. We're not a province of the American empire. Uh, we are a, a nation. We're a country. We have our own sovereignty, our own a right to choose our own path and when we can ground ourselves if we can have a landslide victory here and we, we get nationalists in um who and patriots who are saying look all, all human beings you know have their rights that's great but we, this is a we need to protect ourselves here because people are taking advantage of our goodwill and we need to have fair borders free speech full sovereignty for starters we also need to heal our ecological system, um, uh, you know, the old growth forests, which are dying off from stupid policies while the Greens are in power doing nothing, just yapping about climate change. Uh, a bunch of things we need to do, um, you know, dealing with the housing crisis, but I think immigration and inflation, that's at the root of it. So that dealing with that will help a lot. Um, and socialism, you know, scaling that down long term. But we have these things to deal with and we have, this is our, our nation, our country we have the right to do this it's not racist at all and when we can do that final point i promise when we can do this ireland can ground itself and be an example of okay europe one of the countries of europe where the most woke takeover had kind of happened is actually regrounding into these traditional values in a healthy way enlightened nationalism um going within to heal ourselves then we can be a model for other countries to copy and also when we're in balance, we have more prosperity, more peace, everything's going well, more education. And then we can start to actually actively go out and help other people. So instead of helping people, bring them into Ireland and we'll put them in tents on the canal. How about every euro spent doing that can be, um, you know, do 10 times as much good by helping those people in other countries by addressing the root causes of these problems, um, you know, helping address the corruption or being a voice for diplomacy that ends these wars, you know, a ton of the, by the way, okay. And I said no more points. So, but <laughs> we'll leave it there. But uh, so Jamie McClure, independent candidate for uh, Dublin Bay North in the coming election this Friday, um, please vote and um, tell someone, uh, share this video, like the video, subscribe. Uh, I'm on uh, Twitter slash X, um, Jamie McClure. And uh, yeah, um, just try to spread this message and, uh, to all the immigrants, any immigrants or, um, you know, visitors watching, um, you have a great role to play here where you can talk to Irish people, you can talk to other immigrants and you can say, as many people have said to me, a bunch of, you know, people from Brazil or other countries, Ukraine or whatever has said to me, yeah, Jamie, I agree with you, what you're saying. And I really believe this to my bones. So I'm not afraid to talk about it. You know, I'm a little, it's a little awkward because I'm like, I know people might judge me. I don't like that, but you know, it's fine. Um, you know, the people I've talked to, almost all of them uh, agree, you know, 
And so if you're non-Irish, but you're watching this, um, you or you are, uh, you know, you're joining the Irish nation, maybe you're I Irish, you have Irish citizenship, you might consider yourself Irish, or you might feel like you're growing into this. You know, maybe your kids are Irish, but you'll kind of feel you're still kind of half in um, on that journey. You know, that's cool. Whatever. Um, you have a unique role to play where you can kind of communicate to other immigrants and to the Irish, native Irish saying, hey, look, it's not crazy. It's not racist to say Ireland belongs to the Irish. As an immigrant, I agree with you. And I think that's a beautiful point of balance. And yeah, we need to find balance because the crowd who are in at the moment are a bunch of insane, ideological, incompetent people who have nefarious agendas and are just talking talk to get, you know, cling on to power. So, Gormila Magwiv, Gach Banath, and see you next time.